Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So we didn't have to wait long at all to get confirmation about Panasonic, Tesla, and Japan. Today, just two days after the new Tesla 8K, Panasonic's president, Kazuhiro Suga, tells us that the 4680 cells for Tesla are already underway in Japan. The tone of this new interview was one that was really collaborative between Tesla and Panasonic, not competitive as you'll see shortly. We all have had so many questions around the licensing rights and how much proprietary technology Tesla would actually give to Panasonic. This is a very controversial issue in the Tesla community. Some argue that if Tesla is going to be true to their mission, they should give Panasonic and other suppliers everything that they need to produce the best cells possible as fast as possible and just ensure that Tesla is compensated properly. Then there's the other camp, typically more of those who invest in Tesla strictly for financial return, those much less concerned with EV adoption and sustainable energy. Their argument is valid as well. Tesla is a public company and it does have a fiduciary responsibility to deliver returns for its shareholders. The argument goes that Tesla giving up all of the intellectual property for these groundbreaking sales would reduce their competitive edge in the long run and this would of course limit returns. But where do you guys stand on this one? It is the definition of an ethical dilemma of sorts, and to be candid, I'm kind of torn on the issue as I can make strong arguments both ways. But moving on, here are some excerpts from the actual interview with a Panasonic president and new switch. He was asked, isn't there any leftover structural reforms in solar cells and TVs? Solar cells are reaching their limits even if we proceed with technological development. Our social contribution is almost over. We will change cells to solutions that are combined with power conditioners and storage batteries. This comment piqued my interest because if you recall, when SolarCity bought Celevo in 2014, the company took over plans for the one gigawatt manufacturing plant in Buffalo, New York. The goal was to start producing SolarCity branded panels in 2017, but Tesla bought SolarCity in 2016 and Tesla inked a deal with Panasonic to jointly use the Buffalo plant to produce PV or photovoltaic cells and modules. Tesla and Panasonic do have a long standing relationship and it does extend into the solar cell as well, not just the EV batteries. But in February of 2020, it was announced that Panasonic is leaving the Buffalo plant and there was some speculation that many supposed solar products were going to be in jeopardy. Panasonic was the only company at the time producing solar cells in the US and many people assumed that Panasonic solar cells were being used in Tesla's solar glass roof product. Panasonic was to cease US solar manufacturing operations in May and was to completely exit the Buffalo facility by the end of September 2020. Howard Zemsky, the Empire State Development Chair, did confirm Panasonic's departure and he said that Tesla has not only met but exceeded their hiring commitment in Buffalo. Tesla said it had more than 1,500 jobs in Buffalo, not counting Panasonic employees at the plant. This was to ensure that Tesla would avoid paying a $40 million penalty to the state of New York, which said that Tesla had to hire about 1,500 people to receive certain incentives. So I'm sharing all of this because there was a ton of mystery around where Tesla's solar roof cells were actually coming from. Elon has reiterated many times they were coming from Giga New York, but there were boxes and images that were showing that these deliveries were coming from China, the ones that were delivering the solar roof tiles. And as we know, Panasonic has reportedly left Giga New York, which lines up with Kazuhiro's comments about Panasonic having fulfilled their role in the solar cell space. But back to the interview. Kazuhiro went on to say, we have started developing a new in-vehicle battery 4680 for Tesla USA. The electrode structure is difficult due to the large capacity. We will establish a construction method by making a prototype in Japan. Our strength is high reliability, and although Tesla is promoting in-house production of the battery, there is not a concern that Tesla will compete, not at all. So yeah, this last statement could certainly be lip service to some degree because the fact is that both Tesla and Panasonic will be making 4680 cells and are projected to be the two world leaders of this technology in terms of production capacity. But as we know, their relationship is incredibly beneficial to both parties for a host of reasons which most of you are probably already familiar with but the two biggest being the ability to scale production for Tesla and the ability to get access to world-class research and innovation for Panasonic. But the biggest news here is that this interview confirms that Panasonic in Japan is indeed producing 4680 cells for Tesla already. This lends even more credibility to the argument that Tesla's most recent 8K was indeed covering 4680 cells for Panasonic in Japan. 
Where exactly these cells will go is still a mystery, but the Model S Plaid is reasonable, Cybertruck is reasonable, to assist Giga Berlin Model Y is also reasonable. And two last things to note here is that first, Kazuhiro reiterated that challenges still remain, specifically citing the electrode structure problems given the large capacity. There are of course other challenges as well with the new 4680 form factor, and this is one of my biggest areas of caution for those overly bullish and expecting a painless, rapid 4680 scale. I only say this because if you read the text closely, Kazuhiro said we will establish a construction method by making a prototype in Japan. Remember, a prototype is not mass production. So the reality of how far along they are is a mystery, but if you're assuming that they're going to be pumping out structural 4680 packs in the next few weeks, I would tell you to slow your roll a bit. This undertaking is arguably one of the hardest things Tesla has ever done to date, incorporating DVE at scale, tablets, and all of those other changes. Elon has told us over and over that prototypes are easy, but making hundreds and thousands of sales is 1,000 to 10,000 percent harder. These are big numbers. But with all of that, what do you guys think about this news and how far along Panasonic is in Japan and where these sales might be going? I would love to hear your thoughts below. But thank you for watching. Please like the video if you did. Consider subscribing for more Tesla content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day.